so hi everyone so today i am going to talk about the control signal which were left hi everyone today i am going to talk about the control signal which were remain to be explained that you can see here the hold hold acknowledgement reset in reset out in that way so in our previous class we discussed some of the control pin and related to their control signal like x1 x2 read write and input output memory and we also generated some of different control signal by combining these three control signal that you can see over here read write and input output memory that chart so in this lecture in this tutorial i am going to talk about more other control pin and their related control signal so let's let's list down write down what are the control signal i am going to teach today so first i will talk about the hold second i will talk about the hold acknowledgement hlda this one this one then ready this one then reset in and reset out this is the active low signal that you can see and reset out this five so this five signal i am going to teach in that tutorial so let's first discuss the first two signal so to understand the significance of this two signal we will understand this the significance of this two signal by describing a process by describing a process so let's first describe the process and see what is the significance of this two signal so here i have depicted a diagram that you can see here this is a block diagram and this block diagram you were quite well known to well known with this block diagram before so this is a see that you can see this is an input port this is a microprocessor here this is a memory so now if i want to transfer the data from input output port to memory so let's assume i have connected a pen drive here i have inserted or connected a pen drive here and i want to transfer the data from input output port to the memory then how does the microprocessor process those data from input output port to the memory so at that case what will happen the data will be sent from the first the data will be sent from input output port to the microprocessor and will be stored into the accumulator then those data stored data will be sent to the memory or the concerned device the device where it needs to be sent so memory from it from accumulator it will be sent to the memory so in that way it will send to the, from input output port to the memory if i want to send the data from memory to the input output port so in in that way it will take the opposite opposite route like the memory in the the data will be sent from the memory to the accumulator and it will, data will be stored here and then the data will be sent to the input output port so this is a process to transfer a data from input output port to memory and the vice versa so as you can see here this process is applicable for the small data transfer but at the time of large amount of data transfer it will not possible why the reason is there are some drawback into that into that process what are the drawback first if this process is a time consuming process first one second one is this process is a uneconomical process so by that by that two term time consuming and uneconomical so by that two time we apparently can say that this process is a sluggish process so it will not valid for a large data transfer then how do we solve the problem to solve the problem we will introduce a new device which is called we will introduce a new device here and which is called dma what does it signifies it signifies direct memory 
address which signifies direct memory address so what does it do dma what is what is the actual work of dma mainly it allow to transfer the data from input output port to memory directly it transfer it allow to transfer the data from input output port to memory directly without being routed without being routed through accumulator that means instead of this path data will be transferred from input output port to memory directly so that is the advantage that is the use of dma direct memory address so let's see the operation of dma one by one so first what will happen suppose uh, the microprocessor suppose some data will wants to transfer from uh, input output port to the memory what will happen at the presence of dma first the my input output port will send a request to the dma that it wants to transfer some data to the memory then dma will send a request to the microprocessor and this request is called the hold this request is called the hold by that request dma wants to send a message to the microprocessor that dma wants to control all of its dma wants to control all of the data and address bus of the microprocessor if microprocessor will agree with its request with the request of dma then microprocessor also send a confirming signal to the dma which is called h l d a hold acknowledgement that you can see over here and the hold this two pin the significance of this two signal so then microprocessor will send a confirmation signals to dma and then dma and at that moment what will happen at that moment when it will send a confirmation signals to dma at that very moment this dma will take over the access of all its of all its address and control bus and will connect those all of the address and control bus directly from input output port to the memory and memory to input output port so this is a process and that process will give us a faster data transfer we will give it, it will give us a faster data transfer so that is the use of dma but this device dma we will see in our further in our future lecture in detail of the features of dma there is a peripheral device available in uh, related to dma direct memory addressing so that is the basic process of operation process of dma and you can see our two signal word hold and hold acknowledgement first by that signal it is sending a request to the microprocessor that it wants to that it wants to control or access its address and data bus and if microprocessor will agree with its request with the request of dma it will also send a hold acknowledgement signals to the dma and at that moment dla will start to take over all the take over the access of all the control all the data bus and address bus and will connect them directly that you can see over here and at that very moment of time what microprocessor will does at that very moment of time microprocessor will act as a dummy variable no kind of operation will be performing except the dma no kind of operation will be performing at the time of execution of dma operation so that were the entire process about the dma so we have i think got that significance we have our uh, we have got our ultimate significant our ultimate goal which what is the significance of these two signals which one is a hold and another is a hold acknowledgement now in that next we will come to our next signal which is a signal pin which is a ready next signal is ready ready this one 
so uh, to define the ready signal first let's say um, there are some peripheral device available in 8085 microprocessor kit and those peripheral device are connected with the microprocessor and uh, those peripheral device uh, operate at slower speed compared to the microprocessor so if we wants to transfer the data or if, if we wants to exchange the data with those peripheral device we need to first synchronize those uh, we need to first synchronize the speed of those peripheral device with the microprocessor so at that case microprocessor uh, slower down its speed and then it synchronize its speed with those peripheral device automatic and then what will happen suppose the ready signal is high suppose the ready signal ready signal is high so ready signal high it defines that it defines that the peripheral device has been synchronized to the microprocessor has been synchronized to the microprocessor and is ready to transfer the data to microprocessor and microprocessor can complete the data transfer process so ready signal high or plus volt it defines that uh, it that the peripheral process so this ready signal is high that defines that the micro the peripheral has been the peripheral or uh, the peripheral which wants to transfer the data to the microprocessor has been synchronized with the speed of the microprocessor and ready to transfer the data to the microprocessor and microprocessor can complete the data transfer process so this ready since in a single line in a single line in a one line when ready is one ready equals to high microprocessor microprocessor complete the data transfer process single line in a single line the microprocessor when it is high the microprocessor complete the data transfer process and when it will low and when it will be low when it will be low for the low value of ready so when it will be low what happened microprocessor wait microprocessor wait till till it till it goes to high that means it will it will not able to transfer the data at that time when ready is low so it will remain it will waiting it will be in weighted mode until the ready signal is high so ready signal high that means that it has synchronized the speed of the peripheral and the it has synchronized the the, the speed of the uh, peripheral and the microprocessor speed has been synchronized so ready signal is one and ready and the peripheral is ready to transfer the data otherwise the data transfer data transfer is not possible that you can see here ready is low that means that data transfer is not possible it will wait it will wait microprocessor will wait till this goes to high so that was the ready signal so next signal is reset in and reset out let's first erase this one next signal is reset in reset out reset in and reset out that i am just uh, that i will write later so what is reset in reset in first of all this is an active at low that means it will active when it will get the low signal value low voltage so this signal reset is signal is high value when it will get the high value it will be deactive when it will get the low value low value or plus zero volt or it is plus five volt it will be active so this is the reset in signal this signal this signal can be given by given by processor 
processor or user so this signal can be given by the processor or user it's a good habit when you are right when you, you are going to write some program into the microprocessor always first press the resetting signal that would clear your all the data which was uh, which was stored uh, for a long time into the microprocessor so that's a good habit so that's why this is signal is given by the user this could be given by the user or the microprocessor second thing when the resetting signal is high when reset in will be active when reset in will be active it will it will clear or it will reset in or it will initialize all the value which was stored into the microprocessor like the program counter there were some data which has been stored into that instruction register program counter and other circuit part so it will helps to clear it will helps this pin this pin when it this pin will active it will helps to clear all those data which was stored into those circuit instruction register program counter and other circuitial part and it also send a high reset out signal it will also first it will initialize or clear the data of this circuit and then it will send a then resetting signal will send a high reset out signal reset out signal that you can see reset out the use of reset out as you can see the reset in is going inward but reset out signal is coming up coming outward it is inward that means it is going to the microprocessor and this signal is coming from microprocessor to some peripheral device that means by when it will also send when it will active resetting signal is active so it will send a high reset out signals to its peripheral device and wants to and instruct to clear or initialize or reset the data which was stored into those peripheral device so that is the use of reset out that is the use of reset in but my question is when when the suppose microprocessor is performing some execution or uh, running some program so what is the state what are the state of this two signal at the time of program execution reset in and reset out what are the state of this two signal at the time of program execution at the time of program execution reset in signal will be deact high and it will be deactive deactive it will be d active and then this reset in signal will send a low reset out signal low reset out signal to the its peripheral device and microprocessor will start to execution or microprocessor may start to process at that time so that means at the time of processing reset in signal will be deactive that is that would be high and reset out signal will be low at the time of uh, non at the when it is not performing any uh, execution at the time of reset in will be the when we are just going to write something some program into the microprocessor it we will press the reset in that would clear all that would initialize all the data which was stored in, in instruction register program counter and other circuit as well as it will also send a high reset out signals to its peripheral device and it would it would help it, 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 would, it would help to clear those data which was stored into those peripheral device okay so that were the process and the functions of this of this five signal pin and their significance so in that video we have talked ready hold hold acknowledgement reset in and reset out so there are remaining signal is aale so and s1